Hello, medical student everywhere. My name is Abu Ubaidah Bella from Najran University College of Medicine Pathology Department. Today I'm going to be talking about very important topic, maybe very confusing and very difficult topic and complicated for medical student. So I will go over it in a quick and brief ma manner. It's called the myeloidosis, this topic. You know, you have to go over this point. Number one, origin of the name of a myeloidosis, from where come the name. Number two, what is the definition of myeloidosis? Number three, pathogenesis of a myeloidosis, classification, and histopathological changes which will take place in amyloidosis. Let us start by the first point here. What is the origin of this word, amyloidosis? Actually, it comes from a Latin word called amylum, which is mean starch. And actually, the first pathologist detect uh, amyloidosis, he thought it is starch. So, uh, he gave it the name amyloidosis. Oid, oid, it means similar to. So here, amyloidosis, it is similar to starch. Okay. Osis, it means deposition. So here it's called amyloidosis. But actually it is not starch. Actually it is protein. So you see here the definition of this disease, amyloidosis, is the deposition of abnormal proteins in tissues. And actually this abnormal, abnormal protein in the structure, so it will be misfolded protein. So the result of that is deposited in the tissues. And as you see here, this is maybe, to give you more detail here about the definition in this point, pathogenesis. And actually this is misfolded protein deposited in tissues. You know that normal protein will be folded like this for normal structure and function, for normal function mainly it will be folded like this. So in this case, there is misfolding of these proteins. Maybe because they are produced in excess. These proteins are produced in excess. So failure of degradation of this protein result in misfolding and then deposited in tissues. So if these are cells, these are normal cells in any organ, so deposition of these misfolded protein will result in damaging of this cell and cell injury. So as a result of that, the result of cell injury here, as you see, that there is degeneration. So degeneration due to deposition, heavy deposition of this abnormal protein. And result of that, a clinical symptoms and signs depending on which organ is affected. I will talk about it. And actually in systemic pathology, we'll talk about systemic amyloidosis in every organ. So now we are talking about the basic things about amyloidosis. So let us go over the third point, actually classification of amyloidosis. And actually, I think this point is very confusing and tricky for a student. So please pay more attention specifically in this point. Actually, this classification depends on maybe two points. The first point, which type of protein is deposited? And the second point is, what is the clinical or clinical pathological feature of this type of amyloidosis? And this table will help us a lot in understanding the classification point here of this amyloidosis. And actually, this is very important because we have a lot of type of protein which is deposited. For example, the first one is called AA, which means A here for amyloid, amyloid associated protein. associated protein and the second one is called al a here stand also for amyloid light chain protein so this protein comes from the light chain of immunoglobulin so this is immunoglobulin but this is not immunoglobulin there is other type of protein which is deposited in this type of disease which is called transthyretin And also there is other type, there is other types of these proteins. But to make life easy for you, let us talk about the only these three types. So actually according to these points, I mean type of protein, type of proteins and the clinical pathological feature of the disease, we can classify or categorize this amyloidosis into primary amyloidosis, as you see here, and in which there is immunoglobulin light chain protein. And actually we'll find this type of amyloidosis 
in multiple myeloma. The second one is secondary amyloidosis. And here, there is no immunoglobulin. And actually, this is protein produced in the liver. And it's called it's some sort of acute phase protein, which is producing chronic inflammatory process like tuberculosis or uh, malignancies or whatsoever any chronic inflammatory process which take place in our bodies, it will result in increased acute phase protein for, from the liver. And one of these acute phase protein is amyloid associated protein. So it will be produced in excess and it will be misfolded. Then the next point is deposited in tissues and destroying that tissues or these cells. And these are normal proteins, but are misfolded to make life easy for you. The other type which are not common here, as you see, familial type and senile type. And actually here there is abnormal mutated protein. So there is here mutation, new mutation, which result in new proteins, which failed to be also to be uh, to, to, to fold normally. So it will be misfolded protein. And this is transiretin in this type transiretin protein and here in CNI1 is called A beta protein and actually you will find that this familial type is found in familial Mediterranean fever and this one also found in aging process whatsoever aging process is so these are not very common so you have to, to, to focus on these on the two the upper two type types of amyloidosis Okay, let us go over the last point here. What is the histopathological changes which will take place in amyloidosis? Actually, amyloidosis affects a specific organ like liver, heart, CNS, GIT, starting from the tongue, intestine, and so on. So, macroscopically, you will find these organs are enlarged. So, the first point here, enlargement of affected organ. Then after that, this organ will be atrophied. So the next point here, atrophy. So this organ is started, first of all, to be enlarged due to this deposition of protein. Then after damaging and after degeneration take place, it will be atrophied organ. These, this point is macroscopically, but under the microscope, if you stain it with the routine stain H and E, you will find that it is pink color. Actually, it is similar to collagen and other fibers, so you cannot differentiate which of which. So you have to do another stain, which is called Congo Red. So Congo Red is a special stain for amyloidosis. It's called Congo Red. And it will give you, actually, in normal, uh, I mean in light microscope, it will give you a pink color also, just like H and E. But if you go for another type of microscope, which is called bipolar microscopy or fluorescent microscopy, it will give you apple green color. Maybe these are the most important points about amyloidosis in brief. So if you, I think it is better to go to any pathology books, it might help you more, but this is very summary for the topic. And thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye for now.